Praise the Lord, new life. Thank God for our bishop tonight. Thank, thank God for all the saints of God, all our visiting friends. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with us to 2 Corinthians chapter 5? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll read one verse tonight, one verse of scripture from 2 Corinthians. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I believe David had found something that he never had found in his life in the world, that he said he was glad to be able to go to the house of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 19, and it reads, the wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us, somebody say unto us, the word of reconciliation. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, dear Lord, we thank you for your good word. Thank you for these thy people, O oh God. Thank you for the spirit of God that dwells in our midst. O oh God, we pray that as we decrease, that you would increase and bless us, O oh God. Seeing that we are living in these last days, O oh God, give us a word, O oh God. O oh God, that we might be charged up to do your will, O oh God. Lord Jesus, before the curtains close, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Have your way in our midst, O oh God. And we'll forever give you praise and thanks in Jesus' Jesus name amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord so in 2nd Corinthians it lets us know that God has reconciled you and I back to himself the God of heaven the God of glory clothed himself in flesh came down to a sinful world and brought you and I back to our rightful place in him. How many of you glad about it tonight? So he lets us know that he has reconciled us. John 3, 16 said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And why did he do that? For you and I, that we could be saved. He said, God didn't come into the world to condemn the world because we were condemned already. Our father Adam sold us out from the beginning. So he sent Jesus to redeem us back to him. Now that word reconciliation, it means to be made one with God. Other words, now you and I as apostolic believers, not the religious world, not the people in the world, but you and I as apostolic believers, have peace with God. Are you glad about it tonight? And it also means ending the conflict. So you and I, actually, we were at odds with God. Can you imagine? We done made God our enemy. Now, it's all right if, if brother such and such or sister such and such was my enemy, or Mr. such and such or Miss such and such, but uh, it, it's a bad thing for God to be your enemy. So that's the state that you and I were in. But Jesus came and reconciled us back to God, put us back in our rightful place where our father, Adam, has sold us out. So at one time, you and I were really enemies of God. We want, you and I, we wasn't about to obey God no kind of way. Now, I know if some say, you know, you say, well... I always have obeyed God. Oh, no, you didn't. You might have been a good person, but you didn't always obey God. Because the Bible said we was enemies of God. Isaiah 53 and 6 says, all of us is like sheep going astray. Every man has turned into his own way. In other words, we as a human race, we decided we wasn't going to do anything that God said do. We, would, we had decided and made up in our mind that we was going to do just what we wanted to do. And at that time, we didn't really have to be three times seven. We just, because of sin, and because we had made, not that God was our enemy, but we was his enemy. He still loved us. 
Why? Because God is love. I mean, he can't help but love because that's his nature. He is love. But we didn't love him. Now you and I love him to have the Holy Ghost because the Bible says we love him because what? He first loved us. And the Bible also says the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So you and I really don't know how to love until we get the Holy Ghost. Hear that, young ladies. If young men telling you how much they love you, if they don't have the Holy Ghost, they don't even know how to love you. We don't know how to love. Most of that, most of that stuff we be talking is either out of lust or, or, or fascination. But we really don't know how to love until we get the Holy Ghost. How many of you glad about the Holy Ghost tonight? Romans 5 and 8 says, but God, listen what he said, but God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even while we was God's enemy, he laid out, stretched out on the cross for you and I. They mocked him. They said, why don't you come now? You healed others. You did such and such. Why don't you come down from the cross? How many of you glad that he stayed there? Because he had you and I as an individual, not as one collective group. That's why, that's why sometimes I think we lose it. You know, we, you say, well, such and such, such they kind of slight. They're not living right. But this is an individual salvation. It's not about mother, not about father, sister, brother. It's not even about our pastor. Our pastor, he's the watchman over our soul. But it's about our individual salvation. And so we need to sell that in our mind. If don't nobody else make it to heaven, guess who's going to make it? We need to have that in our mind, sell that in our mind. You know what? When people talk about, well, such and such happened, and, and, and I went into the room, I didn't see my children, I didn't see my wife, and I thought, I never think like that, like the raptor done came, not long as I'm here. No, no, I don't care if it's thunder, lightning, hailstorm, earthquake, long as I'm here, the raptor haven't came. Now, that's the kind of mindset you got to have. That's the kind of mindset you and I got to have that when Jesus come, I'm going to be ready. How many of you know that he's soon to come? You know what? Our world is in real trouble. I was kind of, you know, I was doing my lesson today and kind of, I didn't take time to read all this stuff, but <clears throat> on the internet, I kind of, kind of glimpse it says that the Supreme Court has passed a law. I think California it was, had done put up a law that, you know, they weren't going to have homosexual and gay marriages. Let me put this out here. That's not marriage anyway. I mean, God instituted marriage between a man and a woman. So now, if you could hook up with a gorilla, or ape, or a giraffe, a cat, a dog, man and man, woman and woman, that's not marriage. Listen to what the Word of God said. He said the devil deceived the whole world. And he said he would even deceive you and I if possible. But how many of you glad it's not possible? He can't fool you and I. Why? Because the Spirit of God that dwells in you and I going to bear witness with this word. And this word says it's abomination for man to lie with man as with womankind. The same thing for woman to lie with another woman as with mankind. God said, otherwise abomination. You know what? Jesus didn't die for abomination now. He died for our sins because why? All of us were sinners. But abomination, this is God, this is God said, so this is detestable. Something that stinks in his nostrils, something that he can't stand. Now, you know what? They can put all this stuff on the rest of the world they want, but they're not going to put it on us as apostolics. I mean, whatever God hate, guess who hate it? We hate it too. Whatever God can't stand, we can't. Listen to what the word of God says about Lot. Lot was down there in Sodom with all those, all those freaks. And the Bible says this righteous man's soul was vexed. Even though Lot chose to go there, I mean, he didn't know all that was there. Because sometimes you think it's green on the other side. Well, you know what? I've been to New Life so long, I think I go to such and such a church. Yeah, you think it's green on the other side until you get there. Now, when Lot got there, now he's stuck. So the Bible says this righteous man's soul was vexed every day with the filthy, the Bible says conversation, but it really means conduct 
and lifestyles of these wicked people. Now, you know how wicked they was when Lot went down. I mean, I wasn't even t- intending to go this way, but have your way, Holy Ghost. You know, when Lot, when these angels came down in the form of men, I mean, they want this Lot, where are those men? We want to know them. Now, you know what you're talking about? Knowing me, talking about in a sexual manner. <laughs> in a, in a, uh, it's just detestable. But anyway, Lot says, I got some daughters here, never even touched a man. They virgins. You can have them. Don't do my guests like this. They said, Lot, we're going to get you too now. I mean, they was mad. They didn't want no woman. Now, this is the kind of society that you and I are living in. Now, listen, listen what Jesus says. God says in the Old Testament, he says, men's going to wax worse and worse then come the end. So you and our apostolic brothers and sisters, it's not going to get any better. Don't look for it to get any better. He said, men going to wax worse and worse and then come the end. You know what? I know Madison Leo, he probably don't like us to keep doing this, but I commend him and his young group for what they are doing because they are going into the highways and hedges and they're bringing people in. Can you imagine if all of us get in us some little cell groups and we decide we're going to do the same thing? You may, I mean, you may, we'll be baptizing people all night long. I mean, that pool of water be trouble if we, if we just get some little cell groups and say, you know what? If Leo, Minister Leo and his little group can do it, we can do it too. See, because we are living in some troubled times. So they passed this law, the Supreme Court of the United States passed this law, knocked down the law where California had put a, like a halt on this thing and just opened it up. Now, on the Internet, they got two, two guys, one with his head laying on the other one's shoulder, like he crying like they're just so happy now. Oh, yeah, they might be happy now, but they're not going to be happy in hell if they don't change their ways. You know what? God says... And this is what happened when he brought the flood in. He said men were so evil that they couldn't even think of nothing good. He said the very thoughts of their heart was evil continually. They couldn't even think. You know how bad it's bad when you get where you can't even think of nothing good. God said, repent of me that I made. God said, I'm sorry that I ever made man. So he can't think of nothing but evil. Does that sound like the world that we're living in today? Now, you think America is bad. America is just catching up with some of these other nations. America is just catching up with some of these other nations because we did have some godly principles that we were standing on, but now all that is getting thrown out the window. But I'm glad that I'm an apostolic. Now, for those that this going on the Internet, if you don't know what an apostolic is, that means we have repented of our sins. First of all, we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have repented of our sins. We've been baptized in water, not sprinkled in water, in a pool, in Jesus' name, not Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And we've been filled with the Holy Ghost, and our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. How many of you glad about it tonight? So it says, 5 and 8, but God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled, in other words, we were brought back to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So it's still letting us know that we was reconciled in Corinthians. Letting us know that we were reconciled to God. In Romans, letting us know that we were reconciled to God. Now, God has given you and I the ministry of reconciliation. That means it's our job to do what? Go out and reconcile others to Christ. He has brought you and I in, not to give us a big house or a, a, a nice car or a lot of clothes or this prestigious job. He didn't bring us in for that. He said, I'll save you that you're going to get somebody else saved. 
He said, the Gentiles seeking all this other stuff. We'll get to that later on. I think I got that in my lesson. But he saved you and I that we might go out and get others saved. So that's our job. This is what God is saying to us. I saved you. I reconcile you. Now you go out and get others saved. Second Corinthians 5 verse 20. It says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Okay, an ambassador, that means a diplomatic official of the highest rank sent by one country to another as its representative. So most of us, we watch the news, either you learn, you learn it in school. That's what an uh, ambassador is. He go from one country, we have, we have ambassadors from America. They're over in Russia. And Russia have uh, ambassadors over here. They represent each other's country. So as apostolics, you and I, we represent the kingdom of heaven. As apostolics, you and I, that's our country. We represent the kingdom of heaven. So this world is really not our home. How many of you glad about it? Because everything in this world is going well, down anyway. So this world is not our home. Listen, look what the Bible says about the Old Testament saints. In Hebrews chapter 11, we'll begin at verse 13. It said, these all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Otherwise, they confessed that this world is not my home. These people didn't have the Holy Ghost. But they had a relationship with God. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost that you and I have, it gives us a deeper insight to God. Because the Bible said the Holy Ghost uh, tell us things to come. It reveals things to us. It teaches us. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. All the thing they had, they had a prophet would come in and say, Thus saith the Lord. And they grab hold to, grab hold to that. Thus saith the Lord. The Lord says such and such. And they grab hold to it. But you ain't I got God in us, the Holy Ghost. So they were persuaded and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Verse 14, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Verse 15, and truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have opportunity to have returned. 16, but now they desire a better country that is heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. How many of you glad about it? For he had prepared them a city. I don't know about you, but I'm glad this world is not my home. I mean, this world is getting too filthy. This world is getting too dirty. If God allowed this world to go on another 25 years, it won't be fit to live in. Even John, even John, I mean, it's only been 2,000 years ago. That's not a long time. John said, even so, come Lord Jesus. In other words, even back then, he was tired of this world. My friend, my apostolic brothers and sisters, our visitors, this world is not going to get any better. So now this is the only ark that you have of safety is in an apostolic setting. It's not going to be an ark this time, a big boat. It's going to be a little pool like this. You're going to have to go down in that pool in Jesus' name, have your sins washed away and your name written in the Lamb's book of life. And then you can say, God has prepared me a city. Because very soon we're getting out of here. You know what? I live in anticipation like, you know what? I'm up eating breakfast, but he might come. How to eat fast. I love to eat grits and eggs. I love grits and eggs. I better eat fast because he might come. No, he might come. Taking a shower. Got to get out of here. He might come. On the way to church. Hope to see the saints tonight, but he might come on the way. That's how you and I got to live. You know what? I feel sorry for these saints that because we do have some saints. Listen to what the Bible says. He says, in the last days, it's going to be a great falling away. Me and our first lady was talking about that yesterday. It's going to be a great falling away. Who was he talking about? Baptists, Methodists, Catholics? I wonder. 
No, he was talking about apostolics. Apostolics done made it this far, and all of a sudden, they decide there's something better out there. And then again, he says, so I'm going to depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. How many of you know that, that same devil that seduced Eve? He didn't, he, he, he didn't trick Eve, he seduced Eve. Well, what did God say? Well, God says, God says, Eve said, God said, well, you could eat all these trees we can eat off, but this particular one, you can't touch it unless we go. Ah, oh, you ain't going to surely die. <laughs> What God, what God talking about, lady? So he tricked her. And she ate, right? And that same devil, listen at him. They telling you over there a new life, you got to be baptized. <laughs> you ain't got to be baptized. Oh, it's by faith, brother. Just lift your hand and confess the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Now you say, go ahead on with your bad self. That sounds like, you know what, you got to, just like we in tune with God, he said, my sheep know my voice, and another they won't follow. You got to know that devil's voice, too. That's the same one told Eve, you ain't going to surely die. You don't really need to be baptized in water. It's just by faith. I mean, you know what, and I mean, these people, they real smart. Now, they so smart, that I don't even like to talk to them because I get mad. A holy indignation. Not the kind of mad that you hit them with your fist. But God said, if they don't want to hear, leave them alone. But the thing is, some apostolics is buying into this stuff. A great falling away. Going into these non-denominational churches. You know what non-denominational mean? That means just in it, just in it. Let's have just a big goulash. Just a big goulash, and we just shake it all up, and God just going to come and get all us out of here. Don't fool yourself. If you're in an apostolic faith, you're in a good apostolic setting, you better stay there until Jesus comes. I talk to my kids often. They're out of town. They're grown. But guess what? I'm always telling them, you find you stay in a good apostolic church. Stay in a good apostolic What kind of church are you? Stay in a good apostolic church. Now they don't start telling me, I found a good apostolic church. Because I want to make sure they go to, you know what? Because hell is real. Hell, you know what? I'm scared to see it. I mean, you know what? With these old crazy minds we got, God, you know what? Our mind got to be transformed, right? He said, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let this mind be in you that also is in Christ Jesus. But long as we're in this body of flesh, guess what? The devil come through our waves. Just like you call somebody in San Francisco or New York. You can't see it, but it's in there. The devil, he's, he's the print, pop, prince of the power of the air. So he brings suggestions to you and I. He trying to get us to sin, to do things wrong. But then you know what? First of all, I think about how much I love the Lord. Then again, I think about, you know what? I done came this far. I ain't taking no chances of going to hell. I mean, I could, you know what? I could, I'll be a fool to live for the law 35 years in just one sin. Who knows? I might get killed committing that one sin. I might die committing that one sin. And I wind up in the lake of fire. It would be better if I didn't know, if I, if I would have stayed Baptist, and I didn't know about the lake of fire, you know, because, I mean, to the Baptists, when I was Baptist, I mean, that's just a word. You know, heaven is just a word. Hell is just a word. Use it, do it, use it during your daily talk or whatever. But now I know that hell is real. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to hell. Okay, so now, getting back to our lesson. The very reason... Lord has lied some of us. I would love to say all of us. When I'm, when I'm not just talking about us here at New Life. I'm talking about the apostolic family. The very reason he has allowed us not to get so comfortable in this world, get so complacent, so satisfied, that we'll forget about what our mission is. 
You know, we got some of these, we got, we got some saints, I mean, they, they're striving to be millionaires. Paul said, having food and clothing, be content. He said, I learned how to be a base, I learned how to be a bound. I learned how to be hungry, I learned how to be full. And he said, God will supply all your needs. He said, but my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He tells us to don't even let our conversation be covetous. He said, those that seek after riches fall into a lot of hurt and temptation. Our pastor was talking to us yesterday. He was telling us about some things he shared with, with the uh, pastors, and then he shared it with us that it was four things. And the number one was being honest. So we have to, the Bible tells us to provide all things honest in the sight of who? All men. Because you and I, if one of those unsaved persons ever find out that you and I are not genuine, that's a soul you done lost. Somebody else might can reach them, but you won't. If they find out that you are not honest, you'll never reach them. I mean, God will forgive you, but they won't. People not, people not easy to forgive like God. I mean, you say, Lord, you know what? I'm sorry that I did that. I'm sorry that I, I, I acted like I did. But, but that particular person, somebody else have to win them. Maybe Brother Leo and his group have to get them because you won't. Because they always know you as that crook. Here come that crooked apostolic. And we don't even want, I know Bishop don't want that. And I don't want it either. No, the first lady and nobody else is here. We don't want that reputation around here. We want to be known as honest people. We want to be known as godly people. So that's why God, he, he lets us, he lets you and I, sometimes we feel like everything is going all right. Anybody ever been there? I mean, everything is going all right for me. Everything is good. And all of a sudden, God busts your bubble. Why? He don't want you and I to get comfortable in this world. Because if you get too comfortable, guess what? This is what he say. Jesus says, I'm coming back for those that's looking for me. That don't mean you just standing there looking up in the sky. That means the life that you live. The lifestyle you live. He said, I'm coming back for those that's looking for me. So now if you get too comfortable in this world, you're not going to be looking for Jesus. I mean, you got that bad spoke car there in the garage. You got that, that nice two-story house, gated community with three-car garage. You, your bank account is all stacked up. One reason because you don't give no tithes. Kind of holding, I mean, you got God's money in there too. That building fund pledge, you got that in there too. And so you just living on ease. How many of you know that God will come out and say, just blow on it? Well, God said, I'd rather for your flesh to so You get mad. You get mad with God. You get mad with the bitch. Anybody you can think of that's named holy, you get mad with him. But God said, and this is what he said. He said, I'd rather for your flesh to suffer than your soul to be lost. And he said, those that he love, he does what? He take off his holy belt. He take off his holy belt and he chastises you and I. That's why I try to be a good old, good little old boy. I got enough of them when I was in the world. When I was coming up, I got enough of them. Okay. So now, we are not to forget our mission. So three things I want to point out. The first thing, you, know, you need to understand who you are and what you have been called to. What you have been called to do. First Peter 2 and 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So when people see you and I, they should actually see Jesus. Because actually you and I are to mirror him. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3 and 2 says, we are written epistles known and read of all men. Now, when you tell your, your neighbors, your relatives, your friends, your schoolmate, 
that you an apostolic, that you've been born again, that you in New Life Tabernacle, guess what? Their eyes are on you now. They're not watching those Baptists. See, I could talk about Baptist digging because I used to be a Baptist. Know how Baptists live. They're not looking at them. They're not looking at these religious people. Their eyes on you. That one that came from New Life Tabernacle. So they've been out in the water in Jesus' name. They're watching you. Why? Because you're the book now. You're the only Bible they might ever see. He said, you are written epistles known and read of all men. See, because these other people, they know about them. They, they, they done heard them say, well, you know what? I'm the deacon. I'm the deacon such and such, and I'm the missionary such and such, and I'm the, I'm the, pre, I'm the bishop such and such, and all that. And then they send with these big old cigars. I mean, they marry and they see, see the girlfriend bringing lunch to the job and picking up the check and all this stuff. They know about them, but they are watching you and I. And guess what? You and I need to mirror Jesus Christ. So that's the only Bible that some of them are going to read. Matthew 5, 14 to 16 says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it on a bush, but on a candlestick. And it give a light unto all them that are in the house. And let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Somebody said good works. And glorify your Father in heaven. So this is why you and I are called. This is why God called us. We need to be a light. God has called you and I out of darkness, so now we need to shine that light so we can lead those that's in darkness. We can say, come follow me. I got the light. I can show you the way out of this. I can show you how to get the new life tabernacle. I can show you the way. Either You know what? If you can't make it, guess what? I can do you a little quick Bible study right here. I can shine this light on this Bible study and show you how to come out of darkness. This is what God called us for. The second, you need to be familiar with the country that you are representing. How can you convince somebody of something that you're not familiar with your own self? You don't have any knowledge about. So 1 Timothy 13 says, this is Paul writing to Timothy, right? And it's for you and I. He said, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exaltation, to doctrine. In other words, he said, other word, Paul said, let your, put, put your attention on reading and studying the word of God. You know what David said? David didn't have the Holy Ghost. He said, but this word here, he said, I don't hear this thing in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. But you and I got to hide this word in our heart that we might be able to witness to people. Acts 1 and 8 said, you shall be witnesses after that, you receive the Holy Ghost. We, got, we, God, he, uh, he gave us a command. He gave us a charge. We don't have no choice. It's not like, well, if I feel like it. No, he gave us a charge. He going to give you the strength. He going to give you an out of energy. He going to unctionize us that we will be glad to do this job. How many of you are glad to be a witness for the Lord? Because guess what? He didn't have to choose you and I. He could have chose our neighbor. He could have chose your brother. He could have chose your uncle, your sister. He didn't have to choose you. He didn't have to choose me. You know what? When I look over my life, I got three brothers and three sisters. One died when she was young. So I got two sisters living, two brothers. I'm the oldest. By me, and, me being the oldest, guess who was the biggest sinner? I consider myself because I knew some things that they didn't know because I was older than them. So that means I committed more sin. I don't know why God chose me, but he chose me. So I'm so glad about that. I'm glad to be a witness for the Lord. Second Timothy 2.15, he says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why is that? Because they got these people out there, especially those non-denominational, these people go to those seminars, they graduate. That's why they call them Dr. Such and Such. Now, you run up on Dr. Such and Such, and you don't know what you're talking about. He gonna, you're going to leave that cripple. You're going to feel like you're not even saved. When they start rambling these scriptures off to you, because you know what? The Bible says the letter killeth, 
but the spirit give a life. So you got life in you. But the only thing they got the letter, and they know the letter down to a T. Uh, they cross all the I's and dot all the they dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Cause they've been to the, they've been to these seminars. They graduated. They got their doctrines. They got all these degrees. And you sitting up there on Facebook with your friends, Twitter, all this stuff. You know what? That's why I'm not even, I mean, I'm not a guesser, but I'm not into all that stuff. Because really, I don't have time. Jesus is soon to come. You know what? We can, some of those things that, like the Bible said, the devil is the prince of the power. They are a lot of these gadgets and stuff he's making. He's making this stuff. He's making it for bad intent. Some of the things we can use for good intentions, but really, it's for bad intent. I saw some little kids watching some stuff that I didn't, uh, some little, little tiny kids watching some stuff on, the, uh, on one of these iPads that I never saw when I was like 18 years old. I mean, I might see a magazine, you know, you have to hide. You're like 16 years old, you hide. You don't want nobody to see you looking at that stuff. And they looking at it like ain't nothing to it. So you and I have to study the word of God so we'll be able to rightly divide the word of truth. So when these people, these so-called smart people, I mean, they think they're so smart because they know the letter. They can quote all these scriptures, tell you what chapter, what verse. And I just stand up, you tell me all that stuff now. Have you been down in Jesus' name? Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? The Bible lets us know that we need to study the Word of God, have the Word of God in us so we have an answer to give to every man that asks us about this hope in us. But if you don't study the Word, the Bible said the Holy Ghost will bring all things back to your remembrance. But if you don't study the Word, the Holy Ghost, what can he bring back? If you don't study the Word, what can the Holy Ghost bring back to your remembrance? 2 Timothy 3.16, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all, what kind of works? Good works. Why that? Our Father in heaven might be glorified. Thirdly, you need to understand your mission. Now, Jesus clearly understood his mission. So you and I as apostolics, we need to clearly understand our mission. What we've been called to do. In Luke, Luke chapter 2 verse, begin at verse 42. Luke chapter 2 verse 42. Could you pull that up for me please? And when he was 12 years old, somebody said 12 years old. This is Jesus, not talking about a grown man. Not talking about a teenager. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast, talking about him and his mom and his dad, and when they, Joseph and uh, Mary. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind him in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, but they supposed him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolks and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they returned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple. Let's look, look at this. Found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, 12 years old, remember? Both hearing. Now, the doctors, that's these smart, that these, that these smart Jewish leaders, lawyers, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it, this is a 12-year-old boy now, 12-year-old Jesus, that you sought me, that you're looking for me. Was ye not that I must be about my father's business? Jesus said, don't you? He said, you are you looking for me. Don't you know I, I, I need to be about my father's business? And they, I mean, this is his mother. You know, Jesus, he honored his mother. He honored his father, his earthly parents. But it's, uh, indignation rose up in him. 
You're looking for me. You see what I'm doing? I mean, all these Jewish leaders think they're on their way to heaven. They, they, God said, you, you, you're not going and you're blocking everybody else's way from going to heaven, putting all those heavy burdens on them. So Jesus, he's giving them, he, Jesus talking some kingdom stuff to them, 12 years old, because he understood his mission. Luke 19 and 10, for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So Jesus didn't come to be popular or famous or try to make a name for himself, but he came to do the will of his father. Philippians 2 and 7 said, but he made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, made in the likeness of men. So he didn't try to promote himself. He didn't have his own agenda, but he represented the kingdom of heaven. So now you and I, we said, great is he. Don't we say that? Especially when the service get high, you know, especially us preachers. Great is he that's within me than he that's in the world. So if he's in us, let him continue to do the work that he came to do. You heard that choir saying, it's not about us, but it's about Jesus. That's a true song. That's a true statement. It's not about you and I. It's about Jesus. We shouldn't have our own agenda. We represent in the kingdom of hell. So people need to know, people need in this world, they need to know that life is more than just everyday living. Getting a good education, getting a good job, buying a nice house, two cars in the garage, vacation once a year. In other words, the American dream. Oh, that's good. But then what after that? You know, I was talking with, I was in the uh in the L.A. fitness gym, and we was in the steam room, so it's two Spanish guys. It was hot in there. I mean, it must have been like 100 and, 115 or 20. It was hot. We were sweating. And so that gave me a witness opportunity, sweating in the, in the sauna. So they talking. I can really understand what they were saying. They were saying some English, then they were speaking some Spanish. So I, I couldn't understand it, but I'm going to get my witness in there. So then I said, you know what? I said, man, it's hot in here. I said, boy, but it's hotter down there. You know, I just point down. I'm getting their attention, right? And the other one looked at one, looked at the other one. He, talk, he talking about hell. I said, man, it's hot down there. So one of the guys said, I'm telling you, this is how the world, some of them don't know. He said, yeah, that's why you got to be a good person, because I don't want to go down there. I said, you got to be more than a good person. You need Jesus. So God will always present an opportunity for us to witness. So you and I, we, we shouldn't forget our mission because people, they just don't know. And by them not knowing, guess who catching them? The devil's out there just catching them. He's out there catching I mean, they got these non, they got these non denominational churches. Man, they about 20 times the size of ours. But guess what? That's in natural sight. But in reality, John said he saw a number that no man could count. Oh, our church is, our church is the biggest. Our church is the largest. Our church is the most prosperous. Those that been down in Jesus' name. Perhaps not out of this generation here, but since the time of Adam. God's going to have him a church. Now, do you want to be in that church? Do you want to stay in that church? So now you're in, now stay in. Because the world, they, I mean, they, they, they just don't have, they don't have that insight. So Mark 8, 36, so what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? So now as you and I as being ambassadors for Jesus Christ, we are to get people saved as many as possible before the curtain closed. By whatever it takes, by whatever means, whether it's our monies, our time, or our efforts, we got to get people saved. I mean, you know what? They say everybody going to stand. This is what sinners will tell you. Everybody going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, the sinners going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ to get judged. The Bible says every deed that they've done in their body, in this earth, Every out of word they spoke and they're going to have to give an account. That's how they're going to be judged. But you and I are going to be judged by what we've done for Christ. That's the only thing that's going to matter. What you and I has done for Christ while we was here on earth. 
and he's going to give out rewards. He's going to give out crowns. I would hate to stand there. Minister Leo, little young brother, just got saved. He got all them crowns on his. He got all those crowns on his uh, on his head. And I'm standing out there with one little nugget. It might not seem seem so much right now, but it's a reality. It's a reality. God is going to give out some crowns, and, and those crowns, Paul said, there's a crown of life. So not only is just a little nugget of a lot of crowns on your head. We, I mean, God said, listen to what he said. Eyes haven't seen, neither have ears heard, neither have come into the heart of man. Other way, God said, you can't even think of the things that I got for you. He said, you can't even fathom. He said, have it even come into your little inf infinite mind. God said, you can't, he said, you can't even comprehend. You know, we talk about the streets paved with gold and, and the gates of pearl. But God said, you can't even imagine what I got for you. I don't know about you, my friend, but I wouldn't miss it for the world. Whatever I have to do, like, like Brother uh, brother uh, Derek was preaching on Sunday night. You know, this message kind of a follow-up seems, but this is what God gave me. <clears throat> But he, he was talking about when this, this young man called when we was having a promise ceremony. And as soon as I got he said, somebody been calling for you. Somebody been calling for you. And he told me his name. I said, no, I don't know anybody that by that name. And he said, well, he wants somebody to come. And he's at the, at uh, what you call this place where they put you in there when they're not looking for you to hospice. He said his wife is at hospice, so he needs somebody to take him home, get some things for her, and bring him back and all this. And, and he said, I'm busy. He said, I can't. He said, but he called. He described you. He described your height, your complexion, and what kind of car you drive. And then he told me, and I said, no, I don't know him. So I said, well, I'll go. I, I'll go. You know, I want, I mean, that's the first dinner we had over there. That place was looking good, Sister Natalie and all. They had fixed it up. I wanted to go over there and eat. I mean, that's the first dinner. I'm, you know, I'm up here. Let's, let's do the building fund. I mean, we got to get this place ready. And then when it get ready, I got to go on visitation. I don't even know these people. But I went anyway, right? I didn't go grudgingly. I went with joy. And when I get there, he come out. I looked at him. I don't even know him. But then I took him home, and guess what? While he's in there, I, he, I guess he went in there and took a shower and everything. He stayed so long, but there's a man sitting out there in the yard, so I started talking to him. Guess what his name was? Willie. His name was Willie. Retired. He said he was a retired truck driver. And me and him began to talk. I began to talk to him about the Lord. He said he'd go to a little Baptist church right up the street, ride a bike. I guess he didn't have no car. He said, a little Baptist church right up the street. And so I began to talk to him about the Lord, right? And he said, well, he said, well, I used to go to church pretty regular over in Lakeland. Guess what the name of the church? New Life. Now, ain't nobody going to tell me that wasn't God. God was in the mix and then I also got a chance to witness more so to this young man and tell him what he need to do now since he got saved now. Nah. He said some of those brothers met him on the street and brought him here and got him baptized. But Brother De Detrick said he mentioned it to Brother Leo, and they said they don't know him. But anyway, we got to do the will of God. No matter who it is, it's a soul that needs saving. You know what? I'm getting ready to close. Thank God for your attention tonight. I see the young people coming in, so that's my time clock. Thank God for your attention. Hope that you got something out of this class. But the main thing, we need to be busy about our father's business. You can stand all over the building. <clears throat>